I was talking with Galaxy the other day about the upcoming launch of their GTX 1080 Ti Hall of Fame card, when my rep mentioned that they'd like me to take a look at their GTX 1060 first, as the Hall of Fame card isn't quite ready for shipment at this time. I had a few hesitations as the 1060 isn't exactly a new release, and also because the model they wanted to send over was the 3 gigabyte variant. But when I got to doing some research on the Galaxy GTX 1060 EXOC model that you see here, and the potential that this card holds, I thought it might be interesting to see what it can really do. Additionally, with renewed interest in the $200-ish price tier, thanks to the Polaris refresh of the RX 580, it's important to have several points of performance comparison when evaluating new products. The only problem for Brian the reviewer is that I don't have another 3GB model of a 1060 to test against. So the extreme overclock version of Galaxy's card will have some heavy lifting to do, as today it will be fighting against the Founders Edition GTX 1060 6GB. So for those of you out there who are perhaps familiar with the Galaxy name, but have never seen their cards in person or in an online store, it's likely due to their sponsorship of one of the most popular pieces of benchmarking software out there, Futuremark's TimeSpy. Their US presence is expanding, but right now the only reliable way to get your hands on one of their cards is direct from their web store, where this card goes for $199. That seems like the right price for a card like this that squarely targets 1080p gaming at moderate to high frame rates, and is a full $100 less than Founders Edition cards purchased directly from NVIDIA. Galax offers several different varieties of the 1060, with this white version being the most powerful. It sports a base clock of 1556 MHz and a boost clock of 1771 MHz with memory bandwidth of 192GB per second versus a boost clock of 1708 MHz on the Founders. Granted, it is operating at a CUDA core disadvantage versus any 6GB version, but Galax does offer those as well for a price premium of an additional $40 and the same boosted clocks. The all-white cooler design is a hallmark of Galax's product line, as their Hall of Fame card made this look famous. White versions of Galax cards designate high-performance models, and they look striking and different inside a windowed chassis when we're all used to seeing black or gray as the shroud protruding from the PCIe slot. The shroud on the EXOC 1060 sports a pearl white finish and twin 90mm fans that are remarkably quiet even when ramped up. The white metal backplate also looks fantastic, although the inclusion of this orange warning label that's baked onto the finish is something I could have done without. The card operates at a TDP of 120 watts and functions with a single 6-pin power connector. Even low-powered systems will likely have the necessary power connectors to drive this card as the recommended power supply is only 400 watts. There are white LEDs that illuminate the bottom side of the card around the fans, but we're saved from having to configure 17 different lighting zones as these are the only parts of the 1060 that light up. I think the thing that puzzles me the most about this card is the reconfigured video outputs, as we see only one HDMI and one display port, but two DVI connectors, which are becoming much less common and relevant. Most cards now ship with only one DVI, and the 1080 Ti's were released with only the other two options for monitor connection. Cooling performance is great here, as on the stock fan profile, temperatures didn't go above 64 degrees Celsius. This is possible due to the three nickel-plated heat pipes and copper base plate. During overclock testing, I manually configured a more aggressive fan profile to go along with boosted clocks and power targets, and we were able to maintain almost the same temperatures overall, with the card running stable at about 66 degrees. Now speaking of overclocks, I was definitely impressed with the increased performance I was able to coax out of this card. I was able to dial in an overclock of 200 megahertz on the core and 400 megahertz on the memory before things started to go a little wonky. And I was even able to complete some of my benchmarks at higher clocks before Firestrike caused repeated crashes. Pascal cards in general are good overclockers, but compared to my Founders Edition card, I was able to push this one much further. The FE card maxed out at 150 megahertz OC on the core and 300 on the memory. Let's take a look at how all these numbers translate to performance.
So you could see that even though the Galax 1060 EXOC came into this comparison at a decided disadvantage due to less CUDA cores and half the memory, the results it put up due to its higher clock speeds are impressive. Where it struggled the most is in the DX12 tests, where the benchmarks fell well short of the 6GB equipped Founders card. I also ran into a warning when running the Superposition benchmark on the 1080p Extreme setting, as the program yelled at me for trying to run the test with less than the recommended amount of VRAM. It's still completed without issue, but this is probably the biggest issue that should be discussed. As games get more complex and virtual worlds get larger and more expansive, the area where GPU manufacturers will have to scale the fastest is actually VRAM, not necessarily clock speeds. A 3GB graphics card is good for now, but how it will hold up in a year or two is hard to say. It's hard to recommend the 3GB version of any 1060 for this reason, so I would certainly recommend targeting the 6GB model if your budget allows. Fortunately, Galax does offer one with the same fantastic cooler design and coloring in their web store, which you could find a link to down below in the video description. So what do you guys think of the extreme overclock version of Galax's GTX 1060? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, don't forget to click that like button down there and get subscribed to the channel if you're not already. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.